So welcome back to Voodoo Garage. Today we have got two Mark 7 Fiesta ST180s in. Both have come through the door on Pro Stage 2 Pro, I believe they are. So um, again, as we saw, uh, shown in yesterday's video, around about the 210 to 215 wheel horsepower mark. Now, uh, both cars have actually come in today to have uh, Stage 3 hybrid conversions. Now, uh, what we're going to look at today is a comparison between the two. So you've got the uh, smaller uh, V1, which is essentially super stock. You've then got the VT330R, which is a completely different ball game. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a little walk around the workshop today and look at all of the supporting modifications that you need for each one because they do vary. Uh, we'll then also go next door to speak to Andy uh, who is the owner of AET Turbos. Obviously AET Turbos are the company that make all of our turbos that we uh, develop all the tuning around and so on. So um, yeah, should be quite interesting. I'm really looking forward to seeing the comparison between the two, um, especially someone that's on Stage 2 Pro myself um, and would love to go and put a hybrid on my car. It will be nice to see exactly how they, they sort of perform against one another. Obviously we'll, we'll finish the day out by dyno testing both so we'll get some performance based results in terms of uh, how well they maintain the power um, so you know the, the longevity of the power that you're getting and not only that how much power we can get and at what boost levels and so on so um, let's go and take a look around the workshop we'll go and speak to Elliot and Hayden that are fitting both uh, turbo kits to the cars and uh, as mentioned before we'll go and see Andy next door How you doing, Paul? Nice to meet you. Nice yeah. to meet you. I'm a pair of idiots. I'm right. Famous. Tell the camera, mate, tell, tell the camera what different hardware setups you need on each turbo, because obviously there's a difference. What can you get away with running on that that you can't with that? I don't know. You, you can get away with a stage 2 cooler on a V1. It's not as efficient as running a stage 3 cooler, um, but it can be done due to lower running temps. So what are you going to put on that that Hayden's not putting on this today? I'm putting a stage 3 intercooler on along with the Air Technica boost pipes, obviously running more boost, you need something a bit more upgraded. So as mentioned earlier, we've come next door to AT Turbo so that we can have uh, Andy, who is probably an expert on turbos, would you say? Probably. <laughs> run through the main differences between purchasing your V1 hybrid and your VT330R. So from a novice point of view, what, what's the main differences between the two? Well, the VT, or the, the V1, as it was called, uh, which we produced for Peron, was a direct fit hybrid turbo to produce 280 horsepower. Right, okay. So, to do that on a, on a standard turbo, obviously it needs to pump more air. So, to pump more air, we have to change the compressor wheel. So, we, go, we fit a larger compressor wheel inside the compressor cover. The cover is CNC machine to match the wheel. Also we need to increase the size of the turbine wheel because obviously whatever the compressor wheel produces it's got to go through the engine and get back out of the engine again. So to make sure that we've got the right amount of flow or that the turbo can handle the amount of flow we have to increase the turbine wheel. With increasing turbine wheels downside as always is the amount of lag. So the remit for this particular turbo is to produce a very very responsive turbo to produce the horsepower. So we didn't go overboard on the size of turbine wheel or compressor wheel on this particular unit. Mm. So with all that being done, this unit, everybody knows about the V1, it does what it, what it says on the tin, awesome bit of kit, very punchy, produces the figures time after time. So as things have moved on though, we need to, you know, people are demanding more horsepower from the hybrid turbos that we do. So we needed a unit that was going to do 300 wheel horsepower. Um, so to do that, we had to make quite a few adjustments to the design because we can obviously ultimately machine out the cover on the 
V1, put a massive big wheel in there, but that has a downside. Because we're maintaining the standard cover, you've got a certain amount of volume there. If we put a massive, massive wheel in there, that you know the largest you can fit in there, all that's going to happen is you're going to produce a lot of hot air, which is all right for a couple of runs. You know, it's fine. You'll you'll get some results, but for what we want to do is, you know, we're looking at um, circuit racing, uh, endurance racing, where the turbo is going to be on boost heavily for a long periods of time. So. We have to be mindful that we can't be generating excessive heat that we're then impact on intercooling, oil, many other things on the engine. So we had a bit of a complete redesign. Uh, so that this is where we get the VT330. So the main difference between these particular two units is <laughs> everything. <laughs> In short. Uh, all we've reused on the, on the VT330 is the turbine housing. Everything else is bespoke to this particular turbo. The bearing housing, the shaft and wheel, the bearing system has all been upgraded to a, a KO4 system which we improve up to 420 horsepower. Um, we've also changed the cover to a larger volume cover so that we can fit a larger compressor wheel in there and not generate excessive heat. Uh, what that does is by keeping the temperatures down, your ignition's not going to be winding out um, power, uh, sorry, your ECU's not going to be winding ignition out over time as the heat increases. Uh, we've got a nice bell mouth here, we can fit the TurboSmart BOV and the TurboSmart actuator. Also another good benefit with increasing the size of the bearing housing is the oil. Now, with this particular unit, if we're generating tremendous amount of heat, we're running on quite small oil galleries within the turbocharger. Um, over time, again, that can be an issue. With the VT330, with us moving up to the KO4 bearing housing system, we've got a lot larger bearing housing, can carry a lot more oil, so the temperature of your actual oil is going to come down. Um, so that's that's about it, really. In short, there are lots in short, of. In short, I am baffled. There's a lot more into it than I expected. Sir, we can go in depth in certain areas, which I think we'll do uh, at a later, later, later. Yeah, of course, yeah. But just to give you a quick overview, those are the simple differences between the, the V1 and the VT330. So, essentially, from again, from a novice point of view, which I am as such, this is plenty of power, but straight away. Yeah, yeah I would call this a fast road setup. Yeah, but yeah so for, yeah. for road setup, that's. Yeah probably the more responsive unit. It, it's a brilliant turbo, you know, when I drove the car with this on, it, I was just blown away. Uh, again, this is the turbo we use on our race car, um, absolutely phenomenal, and we give it depth. Yeah. So <laughs> again, for endurance, this is the unit to go That's for, essentially. That's the daddy to go for, yeah. Cool, happy days. So we'll leave it at that, again, I'm baffled, because there's a hell of a lot more uh, to compare between the two than I expected. So again, we'll go back into the workshop, we'll finish off uh, Hayden and Elliot fitting them to the car, and then we'll finish the video off by sticking them both on the dyno, one after another, and see what results-based uh, differences there are. So she cut to Dina, she let me score.
so there you have it, job done. So to give a complete rundown on what happened, so um, the first car you'll have seen, that was the V1 hybrid turbo. This one of Josh's, again, this is the VT330R. So to compare the two, um, at 1.74 bar, I think it made on the V1, again, on a cold run, that made 256 at the wheels and 315 feet pound of torque, which, again, for essentially a, a, a super stock turbo, that's pretty impressive. Um, this thing was unreal. Um, it ran 1.9 bar on the first run, which is a little bit too much, so we wound it back. Um, it made just over 1.8 on its second load of runs, which ended up finishing off at 303 wheel, and I think it was just over 330 feet pound. Um, again, when it ran 1.9, I think it did 306 at the wheel. So, uh, again, not much of a difference from dropping the boost down a little bit. But again, just to be a little bit more conservative and a little bit safer, uh, it's always best to you know br bring the boost pressure down. So again, we know that the car's going to leave nice and safely, and we're going to have no issues afterwards. So, um, yeah, pick your poison. Basically, they both seem to be really good quality turbos and have both performed extremely well on the dyno so you can't really grumble either so um we'll leave as always links in the description below to both the v1 um to the uh, vt330 all of the other mods that come along to support it and we'll see you on the next video